here is and two, two and two and two and twos and, it, and they're all the same um, length that like, makes it a square. Okay, can you show your agreement or disagreement? So today with the second graders, we were extending our lesson on partitioning rectangles. And today they were learning more about what arrays were. So they used their bodies to stand in an array and they had to figure out if they were in a square or a rectangle. Do we have a rectangular array or a square array? Square. Rectangular. Rectangular. And um, they were really reasoning about what it meant to be a square and a rectangle. And then they continued that by looking for arrays in the classroom. Okay, so I heard you say eight on one side and four on the other. Is that a rectangle or a square? That's a rectangle. Eight this way and four this way. What would it take to make it exactly a square? And, um, and then they built their own arrays with classroom materials and drawings. There were lively debates about what size unit, if it needs to be the same size or a different size, or if cutoff is okay. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a traumatic math experience growing up. I hated math. And once I became a teacher, <laughs> K-8 teacher, I realized I needed to start doing it differently because I didn't want those kids to go through that same like uh, destruction of confidence that I went through. And I really started my own journey uh, teaching myself math, tutoring math, doing uh, math classes. But what I'm really here to do is transform math education. Um, so I'm you know, really looking for which patterns that we need to disrupt. <laughs> I am a lead in the ALK-8 program from Oregon uh, and essentially that is a way to, instead of taking federal money and directing like in a top-down way of what kinds of math changes need to happen, this project is very collaborative across ODE and PSU and OSU and, and now the school districts. Um, and we're looking for educators to find problems of practice and to collaborate and find solutions from the bottom up. So we are resourcing teachers, giving them money and um, support to collaborate with each other, which they often don't have time to do. So part of the project that we're doing is we have money to give teachers subs so they can observe each other. You know, uh, myself and the other lead is Matt Marchok. He's an instructional coach here at Creston. And he and I are going into different classrooms and modeling um, different ways of teaching math that makes it more joyful and creative. What we're looking at is how can we use as many senses as possible and experience as possible that those memories will really solidify in their brains. And so years later, they'll be like, I remember when we made those math array puzzles or we stood in an array or we did that project. So we want to move away from kids learning alone at their desks in workbooks and move to where they are interacting with each other because then they take their ideas and they take someone else's ideas and they put them together and they see what works, what they can combine, and what isn't combining. And then the, the discourse, they talk about that. Here, the most exciting thing for me about working with this ALK project is actually getting to collaborate with other people. I haven't had other math educators, people who want to talk about math. Um, I haven't had that. Mostly I say math and people run screaming from the room. <laughs> so in August, we're going to the Oregon Math Leaders Convention in Corvallis. We will be presenting as part of the lightning round of five minutes to all 700 educators, I believe. And then participants will get to choose based on that lightning round, which workshop they would like to attend. And so we'll be doing a lot of hands-on experiences. 
showing what we've done using human-centered design through this, these, basically this spring semester. Um, basically, we want teachers to be able to easily look at the curriculum, do something in a bite-sized piece. We want them to go home with something they can try right away. Um, and not overwhelm them because that's really what we've had to deal with here. You know, give me something I can do in five minutes. So that's our challenge right now and that's what we're hoping to deliver.